Well, I'm a musician, a composer, a teacher, and uh, I, uh, I make bagpipes too. Uh, I suppose I'm a bit of an all-round uh, bagpipe fanatic. Uh, when I was about four years old, uh, I went to Edinburgh Castle with my family and uh, I saw bagpipe players just outside the castle and uh, ever since that moment I knew I wanted to play bagpipes. Uh, I started playing pipes when I was 14 years old and I went to Potter's, which was uh, the music shop for military instruments uh, in uh, Aldershot, which is the home of the British Army. and. Uh, I, I went in and saw a practice chanter um, and I brought the practice chanter and uh, the shop owner um, told me a list of teachers who lived in the area and uh, he recommended uh, Roger Huth uh, who uh, was my pipe teacher and uh, he was a great teacher. So after a few months uh, of playing on the practice chanter um, my pipe teacher brought a, a lovely set of Peter Henderson uh, bagpipes over and uh, I, I fell in love with them and bought them and uh, they'd been in an attic for uh, about 50 years uh, in a house in Scotland and had hardly been played um, so I was very fortunate to get them and uh, uh, soon after that I uh, started uh, playing in uh, a ju juvenile uh, bagpipe competitions and uh, uh, enjoyed very much uh, playing Highland bagpipe competitions when I was young. Uh, I suppose if I wasn't a musician uh, uh, I would have liked to have been a pilot um, but my eyesight's not good enough for that so uh, I can't I can't do that. In fact I can't even see the camera. <laughs> well I suppose my real passion is music. Um, uh, on top of that uh, Hmm. Um, I suppose uh, I'll probably build my own aeroplane at some point and uh, I'll also, uh, I like doing calligraphy from time to time. Well I grew up playing Highland Pipes uh, but nowadays I, I suppose I'm more well known for playing small pipes and border pipes um, and I've got some here to show you. Um, this is a uh, my main weapon of choice. It's a small pipe made by uh, Julian Goodacre and uh, I have a drone system with four drones and lots of plugs um, in the drones. I have end plugs to stop a drone which I don't need uh, and I have side plugs to change the mode um, and I have, uh, I have a full chromatic range on my drones um, so I can play in any mode um, and many different keys too. Um, I have three chanters I use. Uh, this one is uh, a double chanter. Um, this means there are two chanters in unison made out of the same piece of wood. And I can play the instrument normally by just covering uh, the two adjacent holes with the one finger, like this, and I can play a tune. And if I want to play chords, I just slide my fingers from side to side like this. Um, and this allows me to play harmony and polyphony and, uh, and different things. Um, I also have a, a chanter, a single chanter with some uh, extra keys on it. Uh, I actually designed this chanter with Julian Goodacre. Um, we got a grant from the Lonan Border Piper Society to do this. And uh, it has a normal small pipe range. Uh, and then I have two keys, one here and here, which give me two notes above the octave. This gives me the high B, this gives me a high C sharp. And then the clever thing about this is uh, we added uh, a speaker key on the back, which when I depress makes the whole chanter jump a twelfth, and that allows me access into uh, uh, the second register, and then I can play um, uh, another full scale of notes. Uh, so I end up with uh, a range of two octaves and a seventh on this chanter, and uh, if I shake the bell uh, at the bottom that gives me uh, three octaves exactly. And then my last small pipe um, chanter is uh, this triple chanter which is uh, a, uh, a recent acquisition uh, and uh, this is a bit like the double chanter but uh, 
uh, rather than having two chanters, I have three chanters, uh, 27 finger holes, and uh, I can play uh, three note chords on it uh, much in the same way as my double chanter by sliding my fingers from side to side. So uh, as well as small pipes, I um, regularly play border pipes uh, in bands um, as a soloist and with a, a duo uh, with Mattis Branschke in uh, Berlin. Um, this is a, one of my sets of border pipes. Uh, this one is made by John Swain. And uh, I have five drones. Uh, and the drones work kind of like my small pipe drones. I've got end plugs and uh, side plugs to uh, change mode and to turn them on and off. Uh, but I also have these three drone switches here which allow me to turn on and off drones in different combinations while I'm playing. Um, th those are the drones uh, and uh, similarly to my small pipe I have three chanters. Um, so my first is this uh, single chanter in A by John Swain which is fully chromatic uh, over an a range of an octave and a fifth. Um, I have a low D chanter uh, by him too, uh, which does very much the same thing. And I have another low D chanter uh, by Matthias Branschke um, as well. Uh, so at the moment I am writing lots of new repertoire for my double and triple chanters. Um, I've had a year's break from doing that and uh, it's very exciting to be coming at that from afresh again and uh, writing lots of new things. Um, so I've also been working uh, on the Aulos, the double ancient Greek pipe. Um, I've been collaborating with the European Musical Archaeological Project and I've been uh, writing music for the Aulos and working a lot on uh, making reeds for the instrument. Um, I've also been, uh, been playing music with Matthias Branschke uh, in Berlin. Uh, we have a new duo and uh, I compose music for the duo and we explore all the capabilities of uh, playing two border pipes together, um, which is a, a great deal of fun. Um, I normally prefer to use uh, leather bags. Um, I find them much more stable under the arm. However, with my Highland pipes, I do use Gore-Tex bag uh, because of the moisture and uh, it's much more easy just to take them out of the box and play them like that. I normally oil my uh, instruments with almond oil. Uh, I normally do all the bores and the outside um, every couple of months, although I do uh, tend to oil my Highland pipes more because they're mouth blown. And, uh, it protects them a lot more against the moisture. I tend to use hemp over any other material. Um, I tend to find hemp lasts longer um, if it's done properly. Uh, I last hemped my Highland pipes about 10 years ago and uh, they show no signs of wearing out. Um, all my hemp is waxed actually. Um, uh, yeah non-waxed hemp is not so good, um, uh, particularly for mouth blown instruments. Um, I also find with hemp that uh, you get much more direct contact between the reed and uh, the wooden part of the instrument and uh, I think you get better vibrations uh, the, or you get more um, transfer of vibrations from the reed to the actual instrument. I don't use an electronic tuner for piping. I use plastic drone reeds and I use cane drone reeds. Uh, I use cane in my Highland pipes, um, but because I tend to play small pipes and border pipes more professionally, I tend to use plastic reeds. Um, I tend to find they work a lot better on the spot and uh, there are less teething problems depending on what kind of environments you might find yourself in. I tend to find actually that uh, plum is a good wood. Uh, uh, I've heard uh, pipes uh, made by the same maker made of African blackwood and plum um, and the plum tends to have for me a warmer sound. Um, in fact all my pipes here are made of plum 
um, so I suppose I really do favour plum. Um, also, practically nowadays, uh, since the ban on African blackwoods, um, it's much harder to travel between countries with uh, instruments made of that wood. So actually, practically, it's better to have instruments made of uh, natural native European hardwoods. Well, here's my pipe box. Um, apart from bagpipes, what do I normally carry? Um, uh, bag cover. Um, I'm quite a cheapskate, so I don't like to have my bag cover on uh, when I'm practicing because I tend to find out they last a lot longer um, if I only use them for concerts. Um, also, I've got some uh, hemp for any sticky situation I might find myself in. Um, pencil and a pen for taking notes uh, in rehearsals and stuff. Um, what else? Ah, my reed knife um, for scraping the odd reed. Um, whatever music I happen to be learning at the time. This is a jig. I'm also dyslexic, so I normally print the music out in a, a different colour um, to make it easy to read. And uh, oh yes, um, toothbrush and uh, toothpaste because uh, uh, I'm always travelling and uh, it's useful to have that. Tips and tricks. Hmm. Uh, always practice the bit which you find the most difficult and also practice it out of context. So don't just keep playing the same bit over and over again and making the same mistake. Uh, always uh, find where the problem is, isolate it and, uh, uh, and learn that part. And always spend most of your time practicing things you find the most difficult. Um, I sometimes carry talcum powder uh, in a little tub um, to put on my fingers so when I play my double chanter um, I slide more easily across the double chanter when I play. And it also has the other benefit that uh, my fingers smell better. Also the other thing is just try and relax when you play because uh, you, if you if you get really tense your fingers don't move as well and uh, you start sweating more and uh, yeah it all gets a bit much. Um, It's really important to, to hemp uh, your drones well. Um, I found this out to my cost uh, when I was doing a concert in Scotland about a year ago and uh, I had one of my drones tuned all the way down uh, the tuning slider um, to get a note which it wasn't supposed to play. Um, halfway through the piece the drone then fell on the floor and uh, I had to vamp with one hand and pick the drone up and put it back on. Um, but luckily the drone stopped and uh, so I didn't get any nasty hooting sound or anything um, and then uh, I was able to flick the bag and then continue the concert. Well thank you to uh, guy to tv for having me on um, and all that's left for me to say is uh, good luck with your piping and uh, maybe see you at a concert in the future. Um, 